the way Franz Wagner is viewed by the vast majority of NBA fans is pretty out of the ordinary when you consider what he accomplished during his first season in the NBA. It could be a byproduct of playing in a smaller market that was in the midst of a clear rebuilding phase during the 2021-22 season, or simply because his game isn't necessarily the flashiest, or because he's not a particularly high usage ball handler for his team. Regardless of the narrative surrounding his rookie year, I want to take a look at what he was doing to hopefully shed some much deserved light on how awesome he was and what his rookie season means for him going forward as one of Orlando's primary building blocks. His scoring was largely ignored during the Rookie of the Year race despite being the most efficient scorer amongst all the rookies who finished the year top 10 in points per game. He scored 15.2 points per game, the fourth most of any rookie on 56.2% true shooting. These numbers are really solid for a first year guy, but stats at face value are worthless without understanding where and how those points were being generated on that level of efficiency. Nowadays, nothing makes NBA fans salivate more than players that are built like big men that can operate effectively as ball handlers, which is something that most definitely applies to Franz Wagner. So I'm kind of surprised that he wasn't being hailed as this jumbo-sized playmaking offensive initiator during his rookie season. The meta of today's NBA places so much emphasis on big men that can run the pick and roll, and it's something that Franz Wagner does very well. He's far from slow, and I've seen some criticisms of his burst and athleticism, which feels really unwarranted when you start getting into the film. You can see that he has a really quick first step when attacking the basket off of screens, and he uses that really tight handle to maintain ball security when navigating defenses. The shot creation that he's exhibited when creating for himself in the pick and roll is very, very promising. Here he's going to get the switch onto Kleba, and he attacks him off the dribble. He's going to stop and step back into a mid-range pump fake, getting Kleba to bite on it, before making a really slick move towards the nail to put up the floater. This play we can see him navigate the defense in the pick and roll really, really well. He has Marquise Chris on him, and Franz is going to cross to his right side and get going downhill. He recognizes that Luka is still covering Wendell Carter Jr. on the roll, and he uses that Carter Jr. roll as a makeshift screen to force Chris behind him, allowing for Franz to finish at the basket. The advantages of having a guy who's six foot nine that can run the pick and roll effectively is all of the mismatches that it generates. Even if you get a switchable big onto him, he's simply just a big guy with solid athleticism that's going to be able to have a good shot at finishing, even if you throw a defender with solid length and height at him. He's clearly going to be a player that thrives with a lot of spacing around him, as we can see on this play. They initiate the high pick and roll with Cole Anthony, and with all of this space left in the middle, he's going to have no problem taking advantage of that space to get an easy dunk. One thing that's really intriguing to me about his game is the potential for a floater slash runner to develop as part of his scoring arsenal. He's already got great touch as it is, and he showed signs during his rookie season that he was going to be able to knock down floaters and runners at a fairly high level, something that would make him an unpredictable scoring threat. This whole finishing package really starts to round out when you look at his footwork when getting to the rim. Franz is really great at using his height, specifically his long legs, to weasel around his defenders to get to the rim. Even if they're technically in good position to defend him, he's still able to step around them before they can catch up, simply because his legs are long enough to take longer strides than a defender that's moving laterally can recover from. His ground coverage is just really impressive. Like here, he comes off of this side pick and roll, and he runs into Mason Plumlee sliding over to cover his drive. Franz is just going to make a massive stride to split his defenders, giving him plenty of room to softly lay the shot in. And here, coming off the screen from Carter Jr., he's covered by Middleton and George Hill. He's going to slightly hesitate before quickly changing pace, bursting between them with the step through, and he forces Portis to make a really difficult hip rotation to help. Before Portis can get there, Franz is already at the basket and finishing. 
Now, I don't want to spend a ton of time dwelling on his ability as a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter because, one, that's an aspect of his game that I think most people are familiar with at this point. We know he's going to be awesome operating without the ball in his hands on the perimeter. He was a 37.7% three-point shooter off the catch this past season, making him one of the top five most efficient catch-and-shoot rookies in the league. The other reason I don't want to dwell too much on this is because he's kind of been labeled by a lot of people as a 3 and D wing which I think is a really reductive view of his skill set. So just know that yes, he can knock down catch and shoot threes, but it's not all that he can do. But since we're on the topic of what he's capable of off ball, then we should probably talk about his ability as a cutter. Franz Wagner was a 94th percentile cutter as a rookie. That's not 94th percentile among rookies, that's 94th percentile among the entire NBA. He's got really high level feel for anticipating how defenses are gonna react to his teammates on offense, and it allows him to think one step ahead and get to his spots before the defense can even realize what's happening. We can see that feel for the game on this play. The Magic run the staggered screen action up top, and it results in RJ Barrett sagging off of Franz in the corner to protect the potential drive by Suggs. You can see the second RJ steps towards Suggs, Franz immediately makes a baseline cut to the basket for an easy two points. This play here is executed perfectly. Bamba is gonna move to the corner, pulling his defender with him. While that's happening, Franz is gonna pull way up towards the half court line and the Clippers switch Batum onto him and put Shamit on Carter Jr. Cole Anthony is gonna feed Carter Jr. in the high post and with all of the space created from the initial movement at the beginning of the play, Franz just flashes up the middle for Carter Jr. to find him for an easy dunk. One of the reasons he's able to be such an effective cutter is due in large part to his chemistry with Cole Anthony. On this play, Cole is going to drive, forcing the defense to collapse on him in the paint. Franz's man stays to provide help at the rim, and Franz is going to cut towards the paint as Cole continues to pull the defense with him, allowing for an easy pass to Franz on the cut for him to get an easy dunk. His off-ball game is so well-rounded already, and he's gonna be a perfect pairing alongside a primary ball handler like Paulo Bancaro. And while his off-ball ability is exciting on its own, I'm pretty convinced he's got a lot to offer from an on-ball creation standpoint. To me, it seems pretty unlikely that he's just gonna be a guy who plays off the ball. I think there's way more to his game than that. We have a pretty limited sample size of possessions that he had in isolation this season, but in the 52 possessions where he was operating in isolation, he was fantastic, averaging 1.08 points per possession in isolation, making him an 88th percentile ISO scorer. He showed that he's more than capable of breaking guys down off the dribble, using that extremely tight and fundamentally sound handle to attack his defenders. He doesn't have what I would describe as a quote unquote deep bag of moves, but he counters that lack of tricks with the ability to quickly change pace and blow by defenders. He's able to switch on the afterburners at any given moment, and it's really difficult to anticipate if you're the defender. I don't necessarily think that he's going to be a primary creator, but he's got all the room in the world to grow to the point where he can offer some level of supplementary creation outside of all that he already offers without the ball in his hands. But where the biggest opportunity lies for him, in my opinion, is as a complimentary jumbo playmaker and initiator in the half court. I've already covered a little bit how he was able to score in the pick and roll, but that pick and roll prowess extends to his playmaking as well. He's great at leveraging the defensive attention that he warrants on his drives to get some easy kickouts to open teammates on the perimeter. The front court chemistry between him and Wendell Carter Jr. is really exciting as well. They play off of one another as if they've played together for years, and having a player like Franz who can initiate offense on the interior and find a lob threat like Wendell makes for a really difficult time on defense. They have the opportunity to get really funky with how they orchestrate half-court offense with multiple big men on the floor. On this play, Wendell gets the screen to come up to the high post to receive the pass, Franz flashes to the paint to receive an entry pass from Wendell, and when Franz goes up, Otto Porter Jr. comes to provide help, leaving Bamba wide open in the dunker spot for Franz to dump it off to him for an easy two points. 
Here, Franz and Bamba initiate the pick and roll. Bamba rolls to the paint, but all the while, Carter Jr. is being left completely unguarded. And he just cuts to the basket for Franz to send it to him for an easy pass to finish at the rim. Think of all the opportunities this team is going to have running multiple big lineups with Paolo, Franz, Wendell, Mo Bamba. That's a lineup full of big men who can facilitate relatively well, and it's going to create tons of mismatches for the defense. Now, I'd be doing Franz a disservice if I didn't talk about his defense, because he really was a good defender this past season. He's already so good at defending the pick and roll due to that crazy blend between size and quickness. His feel for the game extends from the offensive end to the defensive end as well. He's great at timing his contests, and he's very disciplined to ensure that he doesn't get taken to school by ball handlers. He's one of those guys that just because you may beat them off the dribble or lose them on a screen, doesn't mean that you're out of the woods. Because he's quick and agile enough to recover and provide a contest, and in some cases block your shot if you're not careful with him nearby. Also, due to the fact that he's six foot nine, he's got the potential to be a very versatile defender, potentially guarding one through four or one through five. So all of this being said, what's realistically the outlook for Franz, not just next season, but going forward years down the road in his career? Given how NBA ready he already was last season, I don't really expect him to hit much of a sophomore slump, and if anything, he'll probably have one of the bigger improvements among all of the guys from his class, given he's not really a guy that's going to necessarily have to deal with quote-unquote growing pains. One promising sign that he'll eventually develop into a star caliber player is if you take a look at how he stacked up in Cerebro's five metric suite, which is a tool that I like to use to look at how a player's production in the five major areas of the game stacks up against other players throughout NBA history. If you want a more detailed description of what exactly Cerebro's five metric suite is, you can watch my video on Keldon Johnson where I go into that a little bit more. Franz had a pure scoring prowess of 70, a three-point efficiency of 69, floor general skills of 67, big man skills of 60, and a defensive statistical impact of 73. The only other players 6'10 or above to achieve those numbers at any point in their careers, DeMarcus Cousins, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Carl Anthony Towns, Mark Gasol, Chandler Parsons, Nikola Jokic, and Nikola Vucevic. Even more impressive is that he's the only rookie 6'10 or over in NBA history to accomplish those numbers. Now, am I saying that Franz is the next Kevin Durant? No. But the fact that his rough baseline is already on par with some really great players, paired with everything else that I've discussed up to this point, makes me pretty confident that he's eventually going to become a star level player. He just has so much versatility that you can use him however you want, and from what we've seen so far, he should have no issue scaling up or down, depending on what the situation calls for. Orlando takes a very egalitarian approach to their offense, so it'll be interesting to see how the distribution of shots ends up next season. While his numbers may not put him in the position to be in all-star conversations in a couple years, the play and the production that he's exhibited makes me pretty confident that he's more than capable of becoming an all-star caliber player down the road. So what do you think of Franz going forward? Do you think he's going to be an all-star eventually? What kind of numbers do you think he's going to put up next year? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video and you love the NBA, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like. That's the number one way to support me and help me continue making content. I just released another episode of my podcast, The Media Pass. Be sure to click the links in the description and check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.